we have um, five hand washing sinks within the studio and um, we have little stools for the tiny ones when they're crawling up here, paper towels. Um, one of the things that's kind of unique to us, um, and we're the first cooking school for children in the country to have these, are um, cutting gloves. And the cutting glove um, will actually go on the non-dominant hand um, for children, and they'll wear this whenever um, they're using the box grater or um, they're using a vegetable peeler, um, and then for the older children whenever they're using a knife. Um, and we had these designed to fit a child's hand. You see this one's actually on the larger side. Um, but we worked with a company called Intruder and uh, sent them copies of children's hands and, and talked to them about how the, the fabric needed to be designed in order for it to be able to conform to a, a much smaller hand. So that was pretty exciting when that happened. So we have the cutting gloves. These are the salad knives that I was telling you about um, that we use for cutting. And I'll actually demonstrate to the children when they first um, see a knife like this or when they start using one. Because a lot of children are afraid of a knife. I'll take my arm and I'll cut like this. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah. say, see? No problem. You can't hurt, your, you can't hurt yourself with this one. Um, and that helps them to develop some confidence. We show them the proper hand position on a knife, uh, which is very important whenever they're cutting. And um, we get them used to, to using something in a, in a very productive manner. These are really great knives for anything, potatoes, carrots, you know, anything that needs to be cut. The other thing that's probably unique to our cooking school are these height adjustable tables. Uh, they can drop to 24 inches off the ground for my preschool class, and they come all the way up to the full 36 inches for the teenage class. So these were put together by my loving husband. Um, who I understand you'll meet in another segment. The last piece of equipment that's probably very specialized for cooking with children is an induction unit. And this is um, a type of, this is an electric stove, but it's a type of stove that only works with a stainless steel pot on top of it. So I can turn the unit on and it can be on full blast for hours and the surface here will never be hot to the touch. Um, in fact, the only way that the electrical circuit is completed is with a stainless steel pot in place. So of course the pot does get hot and anything within the pot does get hot. We still have to take specialized precautions for that. But, um, but the unit itself cannot, nothing else can conduct heat other than a stainless steel pot. So if somebody accidentally puts an apron here or an oven mitt or they leave a plastic spoon on here, it can't catch fire nor can it get even warm. So. Is that consumer available type of thing? It is. Uh, this is actually a Viking unit. Um, they're a little on the pricey side. Um, they're about $600. But um, they work really well. And we can boil water here in about two minutes. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's extremely sensitive to temperature. If I put it on simmer, it drops immediately to simmer. Uh, which is really nice. It's very attractive when you are when you are trying to cook, especially with a group this size. These units are all portable. Our microwaves are portable, our induction units are portable, and our mixers are portable. And we do that so that we can turn the classroom over and set up for a specific recipe. This week, of course, we're making the chicken stew, so we've had the induction units out. Um, last week when we were making buttermilk biscuits, we had the mixers out here. Um, but we generally try to keep no more than four children to a unit. Um, more frequently it is one to two children per unit. Um, when we're using this, the stoves, we will set up all five units here along this counter and um, the teacher is then able to walk behind and check each one and to stay you know, really close to the children and monitor the cooking um, as well as their safety. Okay, so this is puff pastry. Puff pastry takes about three days to make, so we're going to use the refrigerated stuff. All right. Um, Daniel, I'm just come on over here, and I'm going to have you use the pizza cutter. I want you to cut this into four equal sized pieces. Okay, so we have four squares. Now, the most dangerous part over here is this hand. So I want you to either put it in your hand, in your pocket, behind your back, or on your head. Okay, so that we can track where it is. Go ahead and roll it right Let's along. Um, I'm going to hold it this way. And I want four equal sized pieces. So right down the middle, both ways. Nope, right here. Right down the middle. You're cutting this across. There you go. And then straight up and down. Good. Perfect. So we'll put these and give you each a square. 
square, and then go ahead and rest it right inside your bowl. The vegetable peeler goes on your middle finger, on your dominant hand, so that the ring is at the top. I'm going to turn it over so that the ring is at the top. Your hand should fit really nicely around it. On the opposite hand, you're going to put um, a cutting glove. And this will protect your hand from the peeler. Some of the worst cuts I've ever had have come from simple items like vegetable peelers. So this will keep you from taking the skin off. Okay? So go ahead and grab your apple in the, in the gloved hand and you want to peel everything off of it. And when you use the peeler, you want to wrap your fingers right around the edges. There you go, so that you've got a good firm grip on it. You're going to be rubbing the apple, basically, with the peeler. Now you always want to start at the top and go away from yourselves. So the easiest way that I've found to do this, go ahead, you can finish. There you go. The easiest way that I've found to do this is to actually start at the top of the apple and go halfway down and then go all the way around the top. And then it's okay, go ahead, go right ahead. Always away from yourself, hon. So start in the middle of the or start on the top of the apple and go right to the middle. Don't worry about going the whole way. You can always turn the apple over. There are about 2,500 different varieties of apples um, that we grow in this country. There are probably a good dozen of them that we prepare from, uh, that we grow commer commercially here in New Hampshire. Those that are most popular to us, of course, are the Macintosh, you'll find Hampshire's, and the Golden Delicious and Delicious. Um, the Fuji's and the Galas are have a very similar texture to the Macintosh, too, so we like to use those for cooking as well. 